Hello there everyone and welcome back to Old World Blues, A to Z series, which we're playing as the Union of Canadian Socialist Republics. How great! I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, but right now we're at war with America Canada, because we gotta spread that red message across the land, and, uh, well, we're gonna try to make a couple of circumstances here and see what we can do. If it goes great, great. If it doesn't, well, we'll see what happens. It's not going super great. I would like to make it circumstances, but, you know, we'll see. Nothing's going to be perfect here, especially when fighting over rivers and whatnot, so. We've made it over. Fantastic. Uh, you'd have to go and you stay there. Um, uh, we might go to Big Stone. Yeah, let's go to Big Stone instead for now. These guys are doing okay. We're going to blitz through if we possibly can. Um, could you guys do that maybe? A tiny, tiny encirclement first? That would be good. Nice. And then you guys can do this. Yeah, might be able to do that maybe. You guys actually made it, which is great. You can start working on these guys here. You guys can go there. Um, yeah, good. Small little encirclement first to begin. As long as we're not fighting over a river, we'll be okay. We'll be more than fine. Beat the crap out of them before they get over there. Great, not bad. Now they're just starting to attack us. Hmm. Well, we've deleted the five enemy divisions. Which does put us in way better equal footing now. Um, but we're not done yet. We've only just gotten started. So where are our tanks? Uh, can you race down here? Can you... Ooh. Come down here? That'd be nice. Can you do that? That would be great. Wow. Alright, so at this point, we're just going to go ahead. This is going to cost us a lot of manpower that we don't have. Um, but that's alright. You know what happens? Where are our tanks? Where are you? There you are. Could you go all the way to Grace Stable, go around these guys, and go to kin Kindersley? Kindersley? Something like that? They're not moving. It's fine with us. You probably start, need to start moving, though. Get Basha? Sure. Nice, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. And welcome back, uh, Calgary, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. I don't know, I'm not British, Canadian. Ah. Oh, we got three. Oh, it's level 10 route. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Can you go to Madrid? Can you go up there? Um, other tanks? Hello? Why do you go to Major? Get those VPs. Yeah. But we're going to be restoring justice as we have just finished what? Ah, scum of the earth. Comrades, uh, the hour is nigh, exclaimed Ekaterina as she paced back and forth across the hall. For far too long has the gentle Canadian worker been crushed under the boot of the ruthless raider. They chew and eat their filling as the laborer toils under their heels. Every day your countrymen have to make the call between heating their homes and putting food on the table. I think you know exactly who is to blame for that. She raised her arm, pointing solemnly to the back of the room, to our north, the decadent Manitoba nobles, holed up in battle for it of drop all pretense. They have realized that when all is said and done, when all the glitz and glamour is stripped away, they are no different than the rest of the scum preying on the vulnerable. I think it's about time they got a taste of their own medicine. She turned around, waving her hand in the opposite direction. And to the south, thugs picking at the carcass of the prolific commercial centers of the old world, always scheming, always on the lookout for the next trinket with which to bludgeon the innocent, I say, no more. She turned to the face of the crowd, raising her arms in the air. Will you stand against them? Will you be there in the people's hour of need? Rid of the engines, we are moving out. Casing out. Ooh. Calgary, you lose five infrastructure. Holy cow. But you get a core. Uh, a cabal of raiders propped up by a soulless AI who knows not by the trading and selling of crude widgets. A more ideal living. Breathing nest uh, of ten revolutionaries for comrades rally against you could not find. Okay then. Updated tankers, nice. Um, I guess at this point we're going to stick with. Uh, oh, do we really want to stick with infantry? We want more motorized. We need more resources. We need more cores and whatnot. In the meantime, we're just going to keep going with this sort of thing. Oh, we should have done the vehicle stuff too. My bad. And we have cut them off. Yes, maybe. Because once we cut these guys off, it's it's just it's just fair game. At this point, it's it's pretty much fair game, anyways. But still, here, just help them out here. Beautiful. And you're in? You're in? Yeah, at this point, they can't do anything against us. Uh, at least I hope. Um, how do we get to Beachy? Let's get all the way to Stoon. Let's make a giant road trip. We're making a road trip here, guys. 
Do they have any of these as cores? They do have a few of these as cores. We killed off 8,000 of them already. Very nice. Let the infantry uh, file in and whatnot. Uh, you, however, can do this. I want you to go all the way around, and then I want you to kill this motorized division. Sons of Kagas and the Vipers. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. And we come back and they're dead. What's not to love? Hey, more military factories, even though we do not have the resources for them. God dang it. Um, just more tanks. That's what's eating everything up here. Oh, we got skin circled. Well, god dang it. Um, you can go that way. Gray stable. Welcome aboard. Let's see. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing alright myself. Only level 7. But we can still get more than enough routes we need. Stimulus, new systems, care package, state funded, radio broadcasting. Sure. Ah, we can still talk about all this stuff too. Which we will in a little bit. Um, we can probably close out of that one. Well, we can talk about Saskatchewan disaster, but let's finish this war off first. Let's do one thing at a time, shall we? Let's do that too. Cashing out was great. We'll get into the core of the final purchase. Her pleas grew louder and more desperate as we moved through the streets of Calgary. Eventually, they closed in on an unassuming warehouse in the middle of town. Brium. Bricks? Nice. Good stuff. Love bricks. You know what? Let's go with maintenance companies. I'm sure we need them too. Uh, we're going to need some more support equipment, anyways. There you go. I wouldn't mind getting some planes, though. Nice. Rubber refinement. Because I'm going to do all that stuff too. But since we're here doing tank stuff, anyways. Coordinated onslaught. Nice. Very nice. Hey, we're done with that. Now we're going to figure out what the next line doctrine we want to do, too. Hop out here. Oh, never mind. He didn't hop out. Sorry. Whatever. Hey, would you look at that? They're all dead. Oh, we'd love it. Yeah, it's been a relatively easy war. I was concerned with how it was going to start, but obviously it's turned out quite well for us. Uh, you know what? Grab that tank. Come down to Dundurn. Elbow, Davidson. You're going to be able to blitz through all this probably pretty quickly. Waka. Janssen. Okay, never mind then. Now we're really out of manpower. Now we're bordering the Kingdom of Manitoba. That's a big chapter. A big group to fight. Uh, but we do have a port. And we'll have a single ship. I don't think we have any ships yet, do we? No, we don't. Which is fine, whatever. That's uh, a sketch one disaster. Oh, I forgot some vault. Lately, I've been finding myself wondering about the vault under Edmonton. Upon initial discovery, we quickly dispatched a team to blast through the bunker door and scavenge interiors. To my frustration, they came back empty-handed, save for some bits of scraps handed over to wandering merchants. But inside the empty halls, unbeknownst to all but our most senior officials, was also an old rural terminal still operating to this day, so we in its files records of dozens of vaults scarred across North America. The vast majority appeared equipped with some nasty surprise, be it in the form of hallucinogens, constantly pumping out of the air vents, deliberately malfunctioning life support systems, and beyond. It wouldn't surprise me if the Redmond Tomb had a little more to offer than just beneath the surface, for good or ill. The longer we leave things idle, the more uneasy I feel. I will speak to Dukov about setting up some unexciting front to dissuade thrill seekers, a storage station of sorts, maybe even a fueling one. In the meantime, the men can conduct field testing in peace. Nice. And we get student too. We got we gotta have a lot of money here. Very nice. This guy's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but oh god dang it, Grace Table, come on. Let's do better than that. Economic decision, Stoon, great. Um, we also may want to consider doing... Of course, we're here. We need to go further to the left. Lock trade. Distress outsiders, because right now we're discouraging them. How many... How much scrap do we... Oh, we actually... You know what? I'm okay with that then. Because we are out of resources. Uh, for 40 days, yeah. Oh, when selected to use... Oh my god, that's a lot of political power. I mean, you get slightly more political power. Is that really going to make up for it, though? Resistance activity chance. Political power goes way down, though, which I don't like. Give it a compliance, though. And diplomatic isolation. No outsiders. non core manpower goes way down. Mm. Do we have any other economic advisors here? It's not worth it. No, we gotta keep blood and steel now. No undesirables. Rated conscripts. Yeah. Goal recruitment. No mutants allowed. Recruit all mutants. 
Well, we need, of course, stuff too. The final purchase, and then breaking the brigade. Then we get into the core. The little prince was cast out by the Madden token crockroaches, a spineless reject amid a sea of cowards. Putting him out of his misery is a kindness, really, except for the high street. Hey, hey, now, no need for that. Penny's digitized voice stammered out as the Katharina and her men hacked and smashed away through the room, holding the surge of the little enterprising AI. The captain scanned his surroundings, deliberately ignoring the pleas echoing back from, from the back of the hall. Let me tell you, friend, you're missing out on some crazy good deals here. We've got the latest batch of Vault Tech edition bobbleheads in stocker. Perhaps you'd try, try your luck with our lottery? You could be sunbathing on the toasty beaches of Miami as early as tomorrow if, if you just let me. <coughs> Captain and Catherine have turned to face one of her men pointing back at the exit. We've got what we needed. Ready to move out at your command. And Catherine did not before mo mosing over to the terminal, sat beneath the screen displaying Penny's unmoving, glowing smile. But please, we have so much to offer, I can make you happy. Without looking up, a Catherine pulled out her combat knife, driving straight through the paper-thin metal sheet covering the console wiring. A distorted, digitized screen filled the room for a few seconds before fading out into silence. <clears throat> the captain shoot the weapon once more before walking out of the server room. She was getting on my nerves. Goodbye, Penny. Goodbye. <clears throat> I don't really want to lose 150 political power yet. I still need that core stuff, too. But it's going up a lot. Mm. Ah, screw it, why not? We need it, anyways. Hey, that helped out our scrap, though. Which is great. Helps us make more tanks faster. Support equipment's looking pretty good. Um, honestly, we can do that in lower by one, maybe. Hey, welcome back, Grace Stable. Yeah, yeah. Still going up a little bit. Um, quickly bounce power change. And then that Sly Fox. As they close in on the Raiders' final holdout, they the men stumbled upon the most unexpected find. Because if we get all the way up to here, people have motion no confidence part one. Ooh, quickly bounce power change. We may have to do this one. Uh, what was that? I don't want to keep the manpower. Okay. You know what? We're going to do this one anyways. Group turrets are nice. It's a little ahead of time. Um, let's go with that one. The Long March Home. Oh, the Saskatchewan disaster. In retrospect, the loss of Winnipeg and Manitoba were a tipping point for the radicals of the CPF. For years, they have been arguing that the front had fossilized, placing eastward expansion and control over the needs of those already living in our lands. At last, it finally come back to bite us. Galvanized by our territorial losses, many flocked to this more populous cell, which soon exploded into a new faction known as the People's Front of Canada, the PFC. The PFC gave the CPF an ultimatum. They demanded a snap election party, a party election too, as they saw it, seize the last opportunity to radically alter the direction of the front and prevent its total collapse. No one quite knows who fired the first shot. Some point the finger of the PFC, claiming the top officials lashed out after CPF leadership failed to respond by giving the deadline. Um, others insisted that the CPF was bitty. Um, <clears throat> it's time to have the PCF organizers covertly assassinated. While I disavow this latter interpretation, I can't deny that the chaos of those days left much up in the air. The CPF soon stormed the PFC strongholds across Saskatchewan, each side draining guns and manpower in the bloody civil war that ensued. By the time the dust had settled, both organizations had effectively ceased to exist, neither having the resources to suppress splinter factions back home. All were left with, were, with, with ghosts and echoes of the past. As I tap the logs from a city controlling a fraction of the territory I once held, I find myself thinking about all the ways this could have been prevented. We never again will ignore the voices of our louder minorities. Oh crap, we need to also get down here too. We need to get to late industrialization. Crud. Oh, that's not good. We're actually not doing very well right now. I wouldn't mind doing a new systems care package. That would help out too. So now an expedition? Well, we need more manpower. Oh, hello. Actually, slightly more armor for these ones. Um, well, then, let's see what we can do against the Montana chapter. Then, what lies beyond the Great Breach? What a guy. Uh, the, 
The sound of battle tanks roared across the snowy plains as they slowly approached the city of Battleford. Prince Albert and his forces had been thoroughly crushed by the tankers. All they needed to do was finish a job by cutting off the head of the snake. The Prince Albert, who stood just outside the city holding a white flag, had smirked on his face. What the heck? The tanker arming the turret within Cat Ekaterina's tank muttered before relaying his findings to Ekaterina. Five minutes later, Prince Albert and Ekaterina were parlaying with two bloody bodyguards, two bodyguards standing behind her. Hello there, my dear. So nice to have finally meet you, Prince Albert said suavely, or at least attempted to. Ekaterina raised an eyebrow, clearly not impressed with the show. She stepped forward, looming over him. Have you come to negotiate terms of surrender? She asked sternly. Prince Albert shrunk back a little, slightly intimidated. He coughed quietly and swallowed before attempting to push the bold persona once again. Yes, sweetheart, I think we have some terms to discuss. May I say you have beautiful eyes? He said, staring intently at Ekaterina. She stepped closer towards him, their faces inching away. Start talking, she spat. Prince Albert cracked and averted his gaze, looking at the floor. He began walking towards the tanks. Well, it's quite simply, really. The last of my boys remain within the city. We are willing to concede all the territories of Battleford on two conditions. Number one, the city remains completely unharmed. Prince Albert said it boldly, and Katharina stared at him for a second, sizing the deal up. She saw it for a short bit before asking, and number two, Albert grinned and tapped on one of the tanks that stood still next to him. You teach me and my friends how to use these bad boys, he said with a toothy grin. I might come around to you, yet. Yeah, maybe. I don't think you understand how this works. Oh, Prince Albert dies. Battleford removed 10 infrastructure. Move 10 infrastructure north of Battleford. Oh, we have to do that one. Soap and water. Mutilator of Miski on soap and water. It took a dozen men to finally subsume him. A pile of brainless bronze and more machines than men with the right re-education program and a good scrub will fit right in with the rest of the tanks. We need more manpower badly. The Forgotten Vault. Beyond the breach, for as long as our resources may be at the moment, I take comfort in the knowledge that we will likely never need a man in the frontier. The harsh storms, blinding blizzards, and the razor-sharp winds of northern Alberta put in more legwork than our entire army ever could, and yet I cannot think of any greater waste than not tapping into our backyard further. I originally recovered a set of old notes drafted by Lydia, leading back to the first and only successful expedition into the breach. They're a bit of a jumbled mess, riddled with contradicting accounts and unclear chronologies, but even taking with a grain of salt, they got me wondering. Mentions of crashed satellites from the old world, blanket in the winter snow, never once recovered. Of hangar bays boasting scrap Soviet submarines and unexploded missiles, rendered harmless by the harsh winter, but with the potential being reignited once more. There are just too many leads for me to get this let go on this one. Lord knows what a decently equipped expedition could return with. Even a fragment of old world treasures could help the tip the regional power balance in our favor, and enable us to fly high over the land once more. Perhaps it's time to peel this one this snowy curtain back once and for all, I can read. Long march home. One of the more notable factions for from the bloody conflict between the CPF and the Peace FC is the Grand Stampede. It can be des des best described as a loose confederation of tribals and frontiersmen stretching across the length of Albertan Waste. Last I checked, it was being held together through a power-sharing agreement between two of its largest and most powerful families. A marriage born out of convenience? Or something more, I can't say. Frankly, I don't care. What it has done is keep me up in as knowing just how well that arrangement has worked out for them. The couple casts a picture of stability, of love, of the community, and extension of the family itself. A type of camaraderie you just can't manufacture. In a lot of ways, they succeeded where we failed. It doesn't stop go governance either. On countless occasions since the break of the CPF, we attempted to rally and bring them back to the fold, and every time we pushed back. The harsh waste didn't help matters, but crucially, for as, long as, for as, we, for as far as we pushed, for as deep as we made it into their lands, we find another stronghold, another village armed to the teeth, and another set of booby traps. We could never quite muster the resources to see things through to the end, but a one-trick pony can only trot so far. We've looked at our wounds and learned from our mistakes, the next time we'll meet on the battlefield, it'll be the last of that. I'm sure of it. At least we get more power still, too. I get more radar stations and more money. It was all very good. We're doing this, I'll put down uh, partisans and whatnot. Because I do want to do this assistance care package if we can. So we've read all of these. Um, what is this? 13%? That's not bad. Diplomatic isolation. That would help us out a little bit. Um, I still want to really rush through this one. More than 500 manpower? We're going to keep that much manpower, though. For a while. We can delete divisions. We can core more things. Um, so there's that. We still need more tanks. Do the infantry have, at least have ta uh, anti tank? Yeah, they do. That's good. We should be able to hold out. They do have power armor, though. And there's a river guarding it. We have to guard, too. How long do we have to wait here for? Oh, we have to wait a long, long, long time. Holy cow. Good. Good. As long as these the Man Kingdom of Manitoba doesn't come knocking for us, I think we'll be okay. 
Also, we probably should have done this a long time ago. Oh, we'll grab you. Soap and water. Well, he's got more war support. That's nice. Um, Passer buys. That's not good. War goes for the pass keepers. Uh -huh. You know what? What if we don't do anything? What if we went to straight to late industrialization? Because we need to get to the fine jewel. And then we're going to save all the political power so we can core more stuff. Because this is getting already pretty high. And we need to start doing more stuff here too. Which really sucks. Which I really don't want to do it like this, but... Uh, Alright, so we, we have that much time. What if we just said no more divisions? Will that kill off all the manpower that we have? I'd rather do this one with ruthless crackdowns. What good is a pack of loyalists if you can't have a few fall guys on hand when the plan pushers get rowdy? If we can keep that much manpower right now, I'm okay with doing what we have to do. For 30 days. So please don't explode on us. That's good. I'm sure we're going anyways. So we can. a little bit more too, a little even more now there as well. Uh, I'd like to do that. I'd like to help out settlements too. Uh, I think we're okay with civvies though for now. Military sending bonuses, we have to do that one next. Okay, so at least we got this one. We're going to do slightly more manpower, but it is what it is, and maintain all the power balance at all costs. <clears throat> the Katarina dropped all pretenses. The members of the Politburo had uh, know how to keep their heads down and clap like seals when a new proposal comes their way. The ones that don't uh, know how to get it off their chest in one go. Not like they'll get another chance. Yeah. Because right now we're pretty high. Intimidation tactics. Hey, weekly war sport game. Let's do this focus first and let's see what happens after that. Covert assassinations. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That'll help out with manpower balance. Once we start making them and have, put factories on them. Of course. Uh, that's not that way. We actually have five already. There we go. And we're going to start shifting some guys over to uh, use riders. Well. Of that many things of riders yet. That should be good enough. There you go. Balance it out a little bit more. Very nice, very nice. Amidus. Just... Uh, just keep squashing it as much as possible. How much money do we have? 84, that's not too bad. As long as they're not going to go to war with us, that's all that matters for now. Oh, red hazards. Well, that doesn't increase our land border with them, which is good for us. If that's the case, we can't go there yet. Oh my god, look at that PP. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's not good. Is this still going higher? How's it going higher? Do we not do this one? Weekly balance power change? That makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. Negative two. How high is it getting? Plus 5%? Uh, I don't like that at all. Safe haven? Pass keepers. I think we're kind of screwed with this one now. Because what am I going to war with these guys? But that opens up another land border with us. Um, how many how many days do we have for this group here? I mean, we'll be able to take them out. The vault dwellers of the south have made the conscious decision to harbor foreign invaders. As far as we're concerned, they have forfeited their right to sovereignty. We need more army XP. Uh, which one do we need? We need air XP or naval XP? Naval XP won't be bad to get once we get a ship. But well, it's once we have a ship, and we need political power badly right now. I'll give you this one too, that wouldn't be bad. Um, 
Send out an expedition. All right, we'll see what happens. I want to go with it. Screw it. Things will push through here. Um, I think if we don't increase our uh, amount of manpower for now, we'll be okay. Or increase how many divisions we're using, we should be all right. We have a little more money now. It's good. Without just any bonuses, we could use that. Um, so more political power, though. We only be taken once. We have upgrades, more manpower. Yeah, more manpower would be good too. Where do we go? Just have these guys go. Passerbys. The wardens are not native to Canada. Have only and recently muscled their way into the Rocky Mountains. Why should the gentle northern worker put up with this imperialist scum? I don't like these scum. They have infamy? Yes, good. Glad we have that one still. I do tank would probably be good to get as well, just in case. You never know. Up to 80? My god. What are we supposed to do here? I may go back and replay this, parts of this. I hate this whole balancing act stuff. It's very annoying. Especially when you have no manpower. Let's go in. You know what? They have no volunteers. You all go in. And this war fast. Yeah, they definitely sent their volunteers all up. That's not bad. That's pretty fast. That's pretty good. Our slightly overgrown comrade. When one of the privates stormed into Ekantharina's tent, blabbering of vanishing purple giants holed up in Waka's asylum, the captain was all but convinced some absurd insurrectionist plot was afoot. But when she led a squad into the building to investigate the matter, ready for an armed ambush, she realized she could not have been more off the mark. Staring at them across the hall were a cabal of purple-skinned, ten-foot-tall creatures, draped in cloaks and medical robes, their bulging eyes, teeth, and grotesque muscles barely containing their vaguely humanoid bodies. Every one of them turned to stare at Ekantharina and her men as they entered, with several instantly vanishing from sight within an instant. Uneasy, some of the younger privates ready their weapons before an elderly looking, wary looking nurse came running up to them. Please, nod in front of the patients. The one proceeded to take a Catherine to one side. Before recounting the history of the Nightkin housed in the asylum, the tale of the unity, and the stealth boy induced schizophrenia, plaguing many of the mutants. Occasionally, the captain would glance over the nurse's shoulder and at her men. Some men mustered the courage to hold uneasy chats with the Nightkin, a few even sheepishly inquiring about their condition. Good machine, powerful, a voice echoed from behind Ekaterina. Sitting behind her was a solitary mutant draped in rags, staring at some of the tanks parked outside from behind the window. The nurse chimed in, oh, that's Lou. He's an absolute peach, occasionally helps us round up troublemakers. He's made great progress lately. Lou turned to face Ekaterina. Are you pa still patriot? He pulled out an extremely weathered comic book. A captain could just make out the front page, preaching a stylized, muscled woman in military uniform, posing in front of an old world tank. Lou, big fan, wants to help uh, fight the right, uh, right fight, as you say. A Katrina scanned him from head to toe. As she slowly began to nod, the mutant interjected once more. Could Lua... He squatted his shoulders and parked his hands in front of him, motioning as though he was driving a vehicle. Katrina couldn't help but let out a slight smirk. All in good time, big guy. Hope you're ready to fight the right fight. Oh. The camel's back. When the Ardens lost the Washington Brotherhood and were scattered to the whim, Mary promised herself one thing, never again. Never would she lose another foe. They'd gone overconfident, cocky, fat off the spoils of being in control when they had been threatened. They lost the battle. For most of the wardens, it had broken them. Their morale shattered, simply meandering through life, seeking simply to get by. Never again dreaming big, Mary held on, for if the wardens were to break, she would be nothing. This promise, the one thing that had kept fire within Mary's heart had been decimated, she had truly become broken. She was forced to watch a safe haven. The city that had taken her in during the lowest life that she had come truly to care about was taken over by a house of force. No longer its own independent nation, a community that cared so deeply about every person having a say, it grew quieter, colder, it grew empty like Mary had, in the final purchase. No. Oh. The miscounts had truly been and utterly ravaged by Katharina and her tanks, rampaging through their fortifications and battlements, decimating any opposition they faced. They've been scattered to the wind, some fleeing for their lives while others surrendered. Friar Black had slipped away, slipped away from the chaos, desperately searching for any means of escape. He found himself in company warehouse, pleading with Penny. You stupid AI, help me. You've got to help something, some secret tunnel back door, anything. They're coming, Black screamed. A, shock, a look of shock came to Penny's face. 
when she tried then to play off poorly. Tunnel? What are you talking about? There is no tunnel within the area. I don't see one. Perhaps you've been misinformed, Penny said nervously. You piece of crap, I know you're lying. Black screamed desperately, his voice shaking. I hear voices inside this warehouse, a voice called out, causing Black to nearly pee himself. You've got to have something for me, Black yelled at Penny, who looked very angsty, her avatar fidgeting with her hands. I wish I could help you, but as I stated, there's no super secret back access tunnel, Penny said nervously. The noise of the tank trucks got louder as they steadily approached Black's location. The noose was tightening around his neck. He grimaced. There was only one option left. Wait. Take these stupid tickets. Give me a pipe pistol, he said darkly. A look of confusion came over to Penny's face as the machine gave him the pistol. What have you... Do you, whatever do you think you could do with one pistol? She asked curiously. Screw you, uh, uh, Black spit out as he shot the screen, leaving him alone with only the sounds of his approaching death. He cocked the pistol, moving into the side of his tempo. Oh, <laughs> what a sick joke this is, he muttered before firing. Hey, I get a pipe gun. No, okay, maybe that was a bad idea, because that greatly uh, expands how much of a front line we have to have to cover. So this says the people's motion of no confidence part one. What is part two like? Maybe there'll be another episode after this. I don't know. You just don't get enough political power. I mean, that's a huge problem. People's motion of no confidence part one. The commander listened to the claims being made over the short distance radio. Ridiculous, she knew, but they would have to be addressed. Do you do you think they're real? Natalia's face had gone white from where she sat at Katharina's side in a cramped office. I don't think so. The commander muttered. Still can't afford children spreading dissent on the radios, especially not of this kind. Heads will roll. She allowed a low growl, and Natalia leaned back in her chair a little. Ekaterina turned to face her friend and realized Natalia was afraid. Of what? A prank on the radio? No, that... <clears throat> Wasn't Natalia afraid of her? Ekaterina smiled and nailed her brows. Want to join me in getting to the bottom of this? Natalia sat frozen and stared wide-eyed at the commander. After a moment, Ekaterina shrugged and stood up. Sit yourself. I'll be back in a few hours. Do you try to get some of that paperwork done? She gestured broadly to the mess on the desk and marched out of the room. Bodyguards fell in behind her. She marched, forming a 12-man procession at Ekaterina's heel by the time she left the building. She parked her personal vehicle next to the snowdrift outside the office in. <clears throat> there she is. The shot came clear from the roof of the building three stories up, and it kept three wheels. Looking up, she saw a lone man at the top of the building holding a flag she'd only ever seen painted on the side of some of the spear's most veteran tanks. A sickle curled around a maple leaf on a starry yellow backdrop. Get her. She rolled again, and the crowd of bystanders rapidly formed a circle around Ekaterina and her guards. The guards drew their weapons. The crowd brandished a host of blunt weapons between the numbers. Hey, if any of you folks want to live, I wouldn't stand by the tyrant, one of the members of the crowd said to the guards. Ekaterina watched as the guards' faces flashed with doubt, then with consideration, then with resignation. One by one, each one holstered their weapons and melted into the crowd. Nothing personal, boss, the last one muttered to her as, she, as he left her side, but I got a family to feed. Ekaterina watched her crowd carefully. She tried to move her hand to her pistol, but a sudden sharpness bit into her side above its holster. A shot rang out a split second afterwards, and she felt a warm, aching spread throughout her torso. She slumped to one knee, pressing her hand to the wound. She would have looked up for a moment later if it were not for the steel worker with a rotten 2x4. Ekaterina's mind slowly crawled back from the brink. She couldn't open her eyes. She groaned slightly and tried to move her head to one side. There was a slight crunch as it brushed up against the snow covering it. Someone was making noise in the distance, but she couldn't exactly tell what they were saying. Nothing moved. It was nice to lie so still, she realized after a moment. She then wondered why she was still lying so still and then remembered she'd been shot. She waited a moment longer, then thrust every ounce of energy in her body to the, into the Herculean task of opening her eyes. The left eye felt like it was glued shut, but the right eye's uh, lid slowly opened. <clears throat> there was nothing but white. The voice in the room in the distance called out again. Kathy? Uh, there were a sphere in it. Ekaterina grunted. She'd always hated that nickname. Hearing the grunt, she opened her mouth and tried to speak. First, a gurgle emerged. She swallowed down a pool of half-dried blood and saliva and tried again. Over here, Nat. The phrase was barely audible, but she heard a moment of silence followed by urgent footsteps in his wake. Oh my god, what they... Uh, they got me good. She coughed lightly. That hurt. I'll live. Natalia's face was even wider than during the radio broadcast earlier. You sure Jesus they did a number on you? Natalia looked at the commander up and down. That bad, huh? Yeah. Right, Ekaterina gruffed, grunted a brief laugh. Should have seen it coming. Guess the broadcast was real, huh? Natalia nodded sadly. Figures. Hey, help me get to the hospital, and if we survive this, I'll make them pay for what they did to me. Got it? Mm hmm? Yeah, and Natalia nodded vigorously, her hand covering her mouth in horror as she continued looking at Ekaterina. After a moment, she wrapped her fingers around the commander's forearms and lifted. Sharp pain shot through every bone at Katharina's body, and she nearly screamed with the effort it took to force her mind's functionality. A few blindingly painful moments passed through before she caught herself hobbling at Natalia's side through the parking lot towards Natalia's car in one of the far spots. Nobody else was present to watch this, their slow movement. When they reached her car, Katharina saw a reflection in the frost-covered windows of the car and nearly puked in disgust. The left side of her face had been savagely and cut to shreds, and a mass of bruises died on her right side. After a moment of silent stillness, she let Natalia hop her into the car. Mom's gonna pay for this. Oh, God. 
with Captain Shaw and the people of Restless, there's nothing to stop from rebelling. Bro. So this is us now. Emergency Council. Do we unlock another part of the Poker Street or something here? Alberta. And Tankard Commune. Oh, they have a generic Poker Street, okay. Oh, this is gonna suck. So, do we still have the balance of power thing here? Poor guns, that's nice. Well, at least we still have the safe haven proposal. It only took a week's siege for the white flag to flood over safe haven. I don't like that we have to do this now, now that we have a little conflict. Um, hmm. They're not moving very fast, and we still have to use our tanks for advantage here. Uh, here we have the tanks here, that's good. Cut them off, cut the tanks off. Cut their own tanks off. And you can go in. Go to here. Go here. Even if it's one at a time, tank v tank. Oh, we got two v tanks, okay. There you go, there goes that tank, good. Well, we've got safe haven back, that's good. Nice. Hey, we eliminated two of the enemy tanks, which is actually really good. And then we've got to be ready for a war against these guys, too. I don't know if we'll have enough divisions for the Montana chapter now. Yeah, we're definitely not. Oh, this is bad. Red guards? Eh. That's so bad. Can you do this, perhaps? I'll go here. Hello. Uh, do you have a tank up here? Can you go to the North Redmond? Well, those are our course too, so. South Redmond. There we go. We've cut them off. Alright, so we've won the war. This is really bad for us now. We got our manpower back. Do we have to do with this anymore? Motion of no confidence. Squabbling fools. Oh, this is super bad. Oh, this is this is god awful. We have a resource back and safe haven proposal. There's no feeling quite like the delicious taste of victory. You know that your troops, your tactics, and your commanding ability were superior to your enemies. And yet it was always a double edged sword, for after victory came negotiations. Uh, Katarina hated negotiations. Before her were the two most important figures of Safe Haven, Mayor Showtime and Mary Mulligan. Showtown was seated down by the desk while Mary remained standing, her arms crossed behind her back, glaring at a Katharina. Explain to me your terms of negotiation, but and be quick about it. I grow increasingly tired of these games, Katharina said sternly. Mary snarled at this and stepped forward, stopped by Showtime, who stuck her hand out and nodded at Mary, a gentle expression on her face. It's very simple. We, the people of Safe Haven, will cease all resistance efforts against you, as well as serve the safe. If you leave the vault and see unarmed, we're not unwilling to work together. You just need to leave us alone, Showtime stated. A Katharina let the words hang for a moment, bouncing ideas within a rain. The Wardens were certainly capable, and their combat prowess and knowledge could be very useful in the battles to come, but plans had already been dragged up for a safe haven, the construction of a massive tank storage, and refueling a facility within the vault. The ball was in Katharina's court. She merely decided where to kick him. Consequences be darned. I'm tired of this. Just scrap the vault. Scrap it. This is bad. If they can't pierce our tanks, we'll be okay. If we can't beat their power armor, we're not going to be okay. We still have time, though. Which is good. We still have a little bit of time. Actually, do we have anything here yet? No. Anything here? Uh, yeah. That would be good. So, when we get rid of this, the outcome of the expedition. <laughs> hey, welcome back. We had a civil war. Our expeditionary operations have proven satisfactory. Less was recovered than it preferred, but we managed to get our hands on what still proves useful. The idea of a next expedition is being debated, about as many feel the cost cannot be justified competitive to what we just found located. Do we find anything? Are we still making money here? Oh. Oh my god. There's a lot of things here. Anything better than 36? There's 28. Uh, another 28. Hmm. 
No, I'm not seeing too much else. And back to the top. Wow, this is actually has a lot of options here. I think it's just glitched. Yeah, it might be. Whatever. Good enough for now. Nothing at all. Oh. Our expeditions reported in, after days of searching, expanded resources, and many close calls, but they found nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just frozen waste and unending snow. What a complete waste of time and manpower. Hopefully well, the next expedition will be more fruitful. Will this, will this wood stop the soldiers grumbling at least? Well, desert, plains. Who's this one? Marsh, urban, mountains, hills. You know what? Actually, I might do mountains and hills. <clears throat> because we still need to go to where the pass keepers, right? Oh, man. They're out with a lot of people, though. I think I want to wait for the Montana chapter first and then go to where the pass keepers. Yeah. Because at this point, can we beat them within... Eh, we can still beat them within 200 days, maybe? That's still a lot of divisions we got to fight, though. We don't have that many divisions. Did we do that? I don't know, we'll see. If I have to replay this, then so be it. That's a lot of divisions to fight. One division. So when do we get to Katarina back? How long does it take for her to recover? Okay, then. And that's just going to give him a war goal against us. Never mind. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure they got another demand against us, but whatever. Looking good on equipment, though. This is awesome. See if under radio broadcasting, we have to do that one next. See us making. Oh god. Maybe some of the circumstances here? Well, some of those push forces are definitely killing themselves. That's nice. Um, we just gotta hold out until we get some of the circumstances done. Huh. Boom, boom, boom. Three special forces or special forces, nothing, and power armor. You might be able to do that, maybe. Well, definitely killed off their division, which I do like. See. Oh god. Hello? Well, I wanted to do that, but whatever. Can you race all the way to here? I'm gonna sacrifice the right side maybe for all this? You go here, here? That would be nice, don't get me wrong. Nice. Well, the war happened a lot faster than, than I expected. Uh, we do make a couple of circuits here, though. It's pretty nice. Pretty good. Oh, crap. That was supposed to be in a circuit, but that didn't happen. Crap. Just hold. It's fine. Still hanging out, having a good old time. Well, how much have we lost? 300 versus 1,000 already? They have way more divisions than we do, though. Big concern for us. Uh, of course, Washington brother would be helping them out. Um, here, they look pretty weak. No, honestly, you probably could actually win here. Post op. I kept her in his eyes felt well. She decided at the moment they didn't quite feel like anything. The right eye was sluggish, but the left eye not only did it not want to open, she realized it couldn't open. What was it open? She knows that it was a scary thought, and then she wondered why the surgery. Of course, fighting off the drowsiness of the surgeon's sedative, she climbed back up into consciousness and forced the right eye open. There was a sour taste in her mouth. She opened it and stretched the jaw a little. It ached slightly. She turned her head and noticed Natalia asleep in the chair next to the bed. She coughed lightly and Natalia jolted awake. Well, the Katarina muttered, seems I made it. Natalia stared at Katarina's shock, a slow smile gracing her mouth. She wiped a pair of tears from her face. I know you would, Kathy. 
I kept trying to laugh. She ended up coughing more than laughing, but the meaning got across. I'll get you one of these days. Spreading that nickname all those years ago, good God. She slowly shook her head from side to side as she tried lifting it from the hospital's pillow, bed's pillow. After a moment, she felt the blood returning to her arms as she sat up, propping herself up against the headboard. A red-suited nurse who waited patiently in the corner, simultaneously looking relieved and nervous at Ekaterina's awakening. Mirror, the nurse nodded shyly and brought a small mirror up to Ekaterina's face. There was a moment of hesitation while the commander processed the image. Permanent scars by the eye, one leading into the left, obviously the empty socket. That looked nasty, but she had a, bit, a, nice, a nice bit of showmanship to pull out if respect needed earning. Could be worse, she muttered while lightly stroking the scars. You're lucky to survive the beating you took until I murmured. I was worried. We all were, and then you... How long has it been since I was attacked? Catherine looked around the room for a calendar. The clock on the far wall read half past four, but she couldn't find any dates. It's been for full three months, Kathy. You were in a coma for a few weeks after the initial surgery, and you've been bouncing from close call to close call since then. Jesus, Catherine shuddered. Am I still in charge? Yeah, but the Tinker's Revolt has been getting bad. Lots of people dying in your name, but hoping that you're still going to wake up and lead them. Guess I better lead them, then. Uh, too many traitors to deal with. She leaped off the bed and saw stars while her head went momentarily dizzy. The nurse tried to stay here, but Katrina held a stern hand to keep her at bay. No time to lose. I'll take it easy today, but there's a lot to do. Lydia didn't die to see us sitting here moping. On your feet, not with her friend at her side. The commander shuffled her out of the recovery room while still wearing the surgery robe around her. That's going to leave a mark. Okay, good. Good. Well, she's back. Now that's kind of badass. I didn't read her thing. The heir, the daughter, the flame of the revolution. The Catherine might be the closest the world will ever see a proper heir to the father of communism after the world was sent ablaze about 200 years ago. Both her past and her parents largely unknown, having either died or departed long ago. Lydia took over as a de facto mother and role model. After her death, the Catherine became the chief commander of the CPS Spear, new nickname pending, and she's garnered quite the name for herself, but nonetheless. She, uh, youth may bring zeal, but also brings clumsiness and instability. With one like a Catherine in charge, people may begin to wonder if their brightest flame might burn the fastest. Okay, so we're not doing so well here. We gotta retreat. That's fine. That's fine. Retreat. It's a tactical retreat. <clears throat> this is a giant pain in the butt, though. All right, so you've got a lot of things going for us. We're just gonna here to smash through as many enemies as possible. Um, the nest. If it wasn't for that stupid civil war, we would have done okay. Come down here. Why did you leave? There was an encirclement opportunity right here, and you you wasted it. How much manpower do these guys have? Oh, they have a lot of manpower. Can I, deploy the, I need to deploy the tanks now. Yeah. You might want them to pop too. Um, yeah, they're really beating the crap out of us here. And eventually, mountain settlements. Every nook had hit a new threat, every crack in the mountain walls, a barrel of another rifle, but eventually, at last, they would have nowhere else to hide. And who are you going to call? That'd be pretty good. The Warrens didn't exactly have a deep bag of tricks at their disposal. At least as far as battle tactics were concerned, most men are now capable of stealing themselves against haphazard hit-and-run maneuvers that these thugs were so fond of, so... At least she's back. We're making a little bit of pee-pee. Not a lot, but we're making some. And hopefully we can actually help our settlements and whatnot, and... Make yourselves better here, because my god, is this, is this rough or what? But I'm going to spend more time with this off screen, and I guess we have a fourth episode here too, because we're not done with our focus tree. We're a swore of these guys, and we still got all this to do, and we still have to do Fine Jewel, which is taking forever for us to get to. So, I guess we can do new economic policy next time, and who needed manpower? But if you enjoyed this episode of us struggling a lot, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will all figure out what we're going to do with the Montana chapter. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.